Throughout history, socks have reflected the changing fashions, cultures, and diversity of the times, as well as the styles of the men and women who wear them. In recent history, socks have been the barometer of the desire to be active in life and to provide fashion apparel to meet the needs of our interests. In fact, socks no longer just provide cover for the feet, but are indicators of lifestyle through fashion and function. The term hosiery comes from the Anglo-Saxon hosan, or hose, that means a complete covering of the leg. Hosa referred to a light trouser. While the contemporary stocking was originally the stoka, or stump, the Anglo-Saxon term stocks designated a restraint, or enclosure. Sock, meanwhile, comes from the Greek word sikos, which originally meant a soft, low shoe. The Romans, who tended to adapt many Greek concepts, changed the word to socus. The Anglo-Saxons later transformed the word to sock, and the rest is history. Today, hosiery refers to a wide range of clothing articles, including stockings, socks, hose, and others. This CD will cover sock manufacturing. Most historians consider Egyptians the creators of the art of weaving, and archaeologists have unearthed socks in 2,000-year-old Egyptian tombs. The true origins of knitting are not known, but there is evidence of knitting dating back to 1000 BC. It is known that the art of hand knitting was practiced in the Near East as early as the middle of the 3rd century AD. Around 900 AD and later, Vikings and peoples of other countries wore leg and foot coverings that consisted of woven cloth wrapped around the leg with cross-banding of rope or fabric. This drawing of King Edgar in 966 AD shows woven strips alone wrapped around the leg. Socks became more popular during these Middle Ages. Knee socks were worn by men, but were only worn by the upper class. When Henry VIII became the King of England in 1509, he was quite the snappy dresser. His elaborate wardrobe included stockings, originally made from woven cloth such as taffeta and velvet. The art of knitting became popular during his reign, and it is said that he was the first English monarch to wear a pair of knitted stockings. He preferred hand-knitted socks from Spain and influenced the demand for this type of legwear. There are many references in the 16th century to the colorful hosan, which were worn by the Tudor swains. Queen Elizabeth I was presented a pair of black silk stockings in 1561 and never wore woven stockings again. The feature of the knitted sock that was so revolutionary was its elasticity. Knitted stockings enabled a better fit without wrinkling and without requiring cut and sew to replicate the shape of the foot. How did the mechanized hosiery industry develop? In 1589, when the Reverend William Lee invented the hosiery knitting frame, he did not invent hosiery because that had been around for centuries. What he did invent was a mechanized way of making hosiery, and that is what led directly to the hosiery manufacturing industry. The quality of the hosiery quickly became better than hand-knitted hosiery and socks. His machine had advantages over hand knitting in that it was faster, made more uniform loops, and allowed for the changing of the fabric width by transferring loops from adjacent needles to make the fabric wider or narrower. Initially, growth was slow in England. However, by the 1720s, there were over 8,000 frames in use. In the over 400 years since Lee's invention, millions of people have worked in the industry and millions more have enjoyed their products. In fact, hosiery manufacturing was one of the first American businesses. At the time of the American colonies in the late 1600s, and under risk of death, hosiery machinery was smuggled out of England to the New World, establishing an industrial belt which included hosiery manufacturing in New England. The first flat bar machine was demonstrated in 1862 and patented in 1865 by the Reverend Isaac Wixom Lamb, an American clergyman. Although he later changed the arrangement to the inverted V-bed shape patented by Eisenstock, the term flat bar was retained as the generic name for both rib and pearl flat machines. During the time of the Civil War in the U.S., northern industry was cut off from the southern supply of cotton, creating severe shortages. The result was a rationing of clothing, and even socks, on both sides of the war. 
At the war's end in 1865, large segments of the northern textile industry, especially from New England, moved south to take advantage of the cotton supply and low-cost labor. During the same period, flat fabric knitting started to give way to circular knitting, which eliminated much of the cutting and sewing required for flat fabric. Since the knitted fabric was in a tube, only the closing of the toe was needed. This new seamless hosiery proved economical to produce and more fashionable. It did not, however, particularly solve any specific sizing problems. William Cotton of England developed the rotary or circular frame and was granted a patent in 1864 as the cotton patent frame. His machine could produce fabric nearly 100% faster, due in large part to the use of vertical needles, and compared to contemporary flatbed machines, had the same elasticity and uniform quality. The sock industry had truly moved from a cottage industry to a factory environment. In 1849, Matthew Townsend simplified the knitting action by the invention of the latch needle. This invention allowed for plain, rib, and purl machines to be provided on the same knitting frame. In addition to simplifying loop formation, the latch needle made possible the potential for reciprocating action. Small diameter circular machines of this period were used for cut hosiery. In 1857, the knitting machine was adapted so that the cylinder could reciprocate, allowing formation of fashioned heels and toes for socks for a better fit, while eliminating some sewing steps. In the 1870s, the knitting machine was still hand-operated. In the next 30 years, power machines took over the industry. By 1900, every change of motion needed to make a fitted or formed sock was in place on the hosiery knitting machine. The ability to knit in a welt was added in 1915 by R. W. Scott. Double cylinder and double latch needles were introduced in 1900 by Johnson of Leicester. These machine adaptations allowed for ribbed hosiery. In subsequent years until today, great advances in machine control and electronic needle selection have resulted in a highly sophisticated product that needs little, if any, sewing. How did the hosiery industry make the transition from function to fashion? This evolution took place in the early 20th century during the flapper era. It was only during the flapper era that the entire population began to enjoy hosiery in terms of price and styling as a major fashion accessory. During the Depression in the 1930s and World War II, everyone's attention necessarily moved from fashion and returned to function to meet the needs of the everyday American and later the needs of our fighting men. It was not until the 1950s and 60s in the era of the sock hop that hosiery once again emerged as a focal point of fashion. Today, fashion and function have both risen to high levels of consumer adoption. Manufacturing equipment, yarns, design capability, dyeing, and finishing have put socks at the forefront of textile technology.